to another episode of Canon Connection. Today with me, I have Genevieve Schleckaway from the, <laughs> is that right? Yes. All right, yes. got right that time. Yep. From the uh, Campbell County Library, and we're going to be talking about the month of October and the many events that you guys always seem to have every month. And we're going to start out with the financial of the university. So if you can talk a little bit about that. Right. Well, we're finishing up our four session cl um, classes at financial, we're calling Financial University. Michelle Pierce from the Wyoming Extension Office is um, teaching these classes for us. She started off at the end of September and she'll finish up um, this month. First one will be October 5th. Uh, classes will be teaching you how to buy a home, the things mm -hmm. that you should think about before you go into it, um, all that type of thing. There's, there's lots of things to consider and so just want people to be aware of what they're getting into. Uh, the next class will be October 12th at 6 o'clock and that one will be talking about credit cards, about how to use your credit wisely, not get into trouble, that kind of thing. Great for kids getting ready to go out to college. Exactly, exactly. I missed an opportunity to get a credit card for my child actually too. It, it's probably a good thing. They're probably not quite <laughs> ready to build credit, but anyway. Um, we also have coming up our family movie night on um, October 11th. The movie will be unbranded and um, we're really excited about how our family movie night um, get about 10 or 12 people every every month and it just depends on the movie but we serve pizza and mm -hmm. lemonade and it's just a nice nice night for people to hang out how many people can you hold in that room um probably 200. oh wow okay. so we're a little under capacity little under capacity. <laughs> i wasn't sure yeah because i know i've heard with different movies you guys have had that thing full we have and then some movies uh not so much yeah not so much um when we did the blizzard of 49 uh last year that was a big yeah i knew that that was a big one that was right. specifically about our region right so right. Uh, what is unbranded about unbranded is um it's a documentary about three guys who um took some horses all the way from New Mex from Mexico to Canada um, and just their quest on the, okay. the whole trip. So it's kind of a cool yeah. cool documentary in that way. What else do we have going on in the month of October? We also have a couple of book discussions, one in Gillette, one in Wright. Uh, October 18th, the book discussion in Gillette will be at 6.30. The book discussion will be You're Never Weird on the Internet, almost, and that is by Felicia Day. It's a very popular book. Um, Books are available right now as we speak. Stop by the library, pick one up, and be sure to come back October 18th at 6.30 to join us for a discussion. Right. Felicia Day is a pretty big name in the uh, gaming community. Right, right. Yeah, apparently she started off kind of totally oblivious mm -hmm. to, to how nerdy she yeah. was. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's very nerdy, but she's really funny and she's really nice. Uh, I think she had a show called The Guild I think is what her show is called. Uh, so yeah, she's always been kind of like promote, you know, like gamers and, you know, people who seem to be more secluded at home that they're not the loners that, you, you know, they think they are. Right, right. Uh, other, there'll be another book discussion in uh, Wright. That book discussion will be October 25th at five o'clock. And the book discussion for Wright is The Witches Salem 1692 by Stacy Schiff, and that's kind of appropriate for the month of October. Mm -hmm. so. Exactly. Kind of a fascinating topic to um, the witch Salem witch trials. So, Does hope. that have any tie-in with the show on TV, Salem? Honestly, I don't know. Oh, that's a good yeah. question. I can't answer that. I saw that was coming back with uh, Halloween right around the corner, so that's right. another right. spooky uh, show. Um, along with all of those adults for kids, we also have um, well, we also have our computer classes every Tuesday night. Um, take a look at our website at ccpls.org to figure out the classes for the upcoming classes. There's one, again, every Tuesday night, 6.30 p.m. Um, call and sign up and mm -hmm. figure out what you want to know. There's email basics, there's uh, Microsoft Word things, there's safety on the internet, so lots of different, there's also just computer basics, so mm -hmm. lots of classes for people to get familiar with their computers or learn something new. Even if you don't know how to turn one on. Even if you, you don't, we can teach you that. <laughs> yes, we can. And so we also have our, our regular um, teen and children's events, our weekly story times for kids. Um, story time is Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, 10.30. Toddler time is Wednesdays and Thursdays at 9.30. And families and jammies for all parents and their kids dressed in pajamas if they so desire. Um, at 6.30 on Thursdays. There's also um, other weekly events for um, teens. 
whether it be Dungeons and Dragons, um, Card Club, Minecraft, Robotics, um, anime, game playing. So give the library a call and yeah. stop by, hang out. The, the teen clubs are kind of cool because they um, are led by the teens themselves. Mm -hmm. So the, the um, clubs are generated with teen ideas. If they want to lead a club, they're welcome to do it and head it up and figure out how to Get it to get it to work so it's kind of a cool opportunity yeah. for kids that are interested in different things too you know minecraft is still a giant ball that just keeps rolling it that does yep. my nieces and everybody still love that thing i'm like that's so simple but maybe that's <laughs> part of it yeah yeah um I, i'm gonna jump back to the kids there's t there's a movie day on an early release october 12th at 2 30. Um, zootopia will be shown um, so stop by the library for that there's also um, our big night for kids is coming up the end of October. That's Family Fright Night. Um, we get we they do it for two nights, Monday and Tuesday, October 24th and October 25th. <clears throat> excuse me, at seven. Um, you must have a ticket. It's a, the tickets are free, but you need to have a ticket because um, it's such a popular event okay. that without we we start turning people away. So. Um, the room is filled to capacity. Dress in your favorite costumes. Um, Dare officers are usually there. Um, McGruff, the crime yeah. dog, all kinds of fun stuff. So please how join do, us. How do now. they go about getting a ticket? What do they need to do? Oh, I'm sorry. They just stop by the library. Um, stop by the library children's desk, um, um, and the tickets go out. Let's see. Oh, October 11th. Sorry, the tickets okay, will be available. <laughs> so can you go online and get it? Can you print one off online? No, no? we don't have okay. that. Do not have that available, so stop by the library. Um, also, the, there's an early release uh, um, event for teens on October 12th. That's, there's a teen advisory board meeting, and also kids are invited to stop by and do some gaming after school that, for that early release day. Um, there's also no school gaming days on October 20th and 21st. Um, I believe those are parent-teacher conferences, so kids are invited to the library to hang out. and and hang out with their friends in a safe environment. Do these kids ever go to school? Seems like we've got half days, not in school, man. Right, yeah, we should all go back to school, yeah, exactly. shouldn't we? Um, I think that's about it. There's, there are, also in celebrating Halloween for teens, there's a uh, riddle extravaganza. So teens are invited to stop by the teen room and um, guess the riddles they might win a piece of candy or a whole jar of candy so so is the riddle like up on a board or how, how do they how do they how is that set up honestly i don't know that oh, okay. answer either i'm sorry no, you're but good. um you know they can tell you all about it in the teen room and stop by or give them a call uh the phone number to the teen room well the t phone number to the library is 682-3223 just give them a call there and they'll transfer you to yeah, where definitely. you need to go and if you need, uh, you can always print these things off online. Yes. The whole calendar that we have here right. in front of us. Uh, I know you guys also uh, have specific events you guys uh, uh, have on the front of your website too. So if you're looking for anything specific or you're just looking to see maybe that what's, what every day is, you can find all that stuff online too. And uh, what is it, ccpls? Dot org is dot the org. website, yes. yep. Uh, anything else? I think that's about it. Well, definitely come on down. I know uh, the Family Fright Night is a big thing. My nieces love going there. They love dressing up and seeing all the other kids all dressed up, and it's definitely a, a great family event you guys host. Most definitely. Yeah. Thank you. So, all right, well, thank you. Welcome to County Connections. My name is Heidi Hunter. I'm one of the nurses with Public Health. And today with me I have Lindsay Lang. She's also one of the nurses with Public Health. And then we have Paxton, our panda, behind us, who we will introduce a little bit later. Uh, today we're going to be talking about um, influenza, uh, or it's now flu season, um, so that's kind of our prime time at public health where we get, we're pretty busy, so we're going to touch on, you know, the basics of it, what influenza is, the symptoms, a little bit about the vaccine requirements, um, things like that. So first of all, we'll start out with um, what is influenza. A lot of people get it confused with the stomach flu. Um, which it is not. It is a um, respiratory illness actually caused by the influenza virus um, that can affect the nose, the throat, and the lungs. Um, so it is not the stomach flu. We have to clarify that. We get people thinking that pretty frequently. So um, it is specifically a respiratory illness. So 
So common symptoms of influenza are sudden onset of fever, coughing, a sore throat, a runny nose, body aches, headaches, and fatigue. And influenza is often spread, you know, through person-to-person -person contact, um, droplets, so coughing and sneezing, and it can spread to people up to six feet away. To prevent the spread of influenza, you should definitely practice good hand washing, uh, cover your mouth when coughing or when sneezing, and stay home if from work or school if you're sick. And there is that time frame window too that, you know, influenza is not a bacterial um, illness, so antibiotics aren't gonna do you any good. There's a 48 hour window, so if we have patients who have those symptoms or um, anyone has these symptoms, you have 48 hours to go to your doctor basically and. Um, they may put you on an antiviral medication if, if you do test positive for influenza. Um, so that is important. There's, it's just a small window there, but it, so if you think you are, you may have it, go in right away. Um, so Lindsay, there's a lot of other complications and stuff that can be caused by influenza. If you want to talk a little bit about that. There are. <laughs> so if you don't get on top of influenza right when you feel that you're sick, you can have complications such as bacterial pneumonia, ear infections, uh, sinus infections, dehydration or worsening of chronic conditions. If you have congestive heart failure, diabetes or asthma already, influenza will just make those conditions worse. And then you know, everyone can be, everyone can get the flu, so everyone should get the flu shot. Children six months and older should be vaccinated, and adults, all, I mean, all adults really should get vaccinated. Right. Um, you know, particularly if you are at a higher risk for, well, pregnant women for one, and then chronic, people who have chronic conditions, like Lindsay talked about, congestive right. heart failure, asthma, COPD, diabetes, some of those ones, your doctors will be strongly recommending that you get your flu shot. And um, every year the virus changes. So it's changing, it's circulating all the time. It can change throughout just the flu season and throughout the year. So they, what researchers have to do is basically predict which strains are gonna be the most prevalent based on surveillance and other research they've done many months ahead of time. So this year there are um, two vaccines available. One has a three strain coverage and one has a four strain. Um, at Public Health, we will be offering the, the four strain shot. So it's one shot covers four strains, two strains of influenza A and two strains of influenza B. Um, they're more specific, but it would just confuse people if we talked about that. So, um, and like I said, there are strains that aren't covered in the shot as well. So when people say, oh, I got the flu shot and, and I got the flu. Well, there are a few circumstances when that can happen. First of all, there are strains that are not covered. They have to predict the most common. Um, and so it is, there is always a chance you could still end up getting influenza without it. What it does do is it can lessen the severity of it if you do get your shot. And there is kind of that prime, prime window as far as when you should get it. Flu season usually is peaks between December and March, um, but it can go all the way through till May and it can start as early as October. Um, and so what the CDC recommends is October, by the end of October, have your flu shot done. Um, and it does take two weeks for that, um, for your immune system to build up full coverage. So it's not like you get your flu shot, boom, you have full coverage. So we do have a kickoff coming up, which is kind of our big event um, on October 7th. It is an all day, 12 hour flu clinic. Um, that's when we're gonna start doing flu shots. So it's 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, you can just walk in at any time. We'll have flu shots available. Um, just make sure to bring um, $25 cash or check. Um, and then if you do have insurance that covers the flu shot, which our, our kind of gal, office gals know all the details about that. So if, if um, you have insurance that covers it, then you won't have to pay the fee, but just bring it in case and, and bring your, so Medicare, Medicaid or um, your regular insurance card. And then the CDC made a few changes to their recommendations this year. So previously the uh, flu shot was offered with an intranasal um, administration route, so just the nasal spray, and they've determined that to be ineffective. So at our public health, we will only have the injectable flu shot this year. 
Um, they've also changed the recommendation of the egg allergy being contraindicated with the flu vaccine. So people who have only experienced hives when they've eaten egg products are fine to get the flu shot. And then anyone who has experienced uh, throat swelling or trouble breathing when eating eggs, they can also receive the flu shot. It's just recommended that you do so in a clinic where there's you know, nurses or medical staff available. And then the standard recommendations for the flu shot are one vaccine per season, and there will be a booster dose given to children under seven upon their first flu shot. You'll come back in after 28 days and get a booster dose. So those are kind of the basics. If you have any other questions, you can certainly call our number at Public Health is 682-7275, um, and you can ask for any nurses. Um, and like I said, after that, October 7th, we'll have flu shots available upon walk-in time. Um, so uh, come on and get that. We'll take care of you. And then I'll let Lindsay talk uh, a little bit about Paxton behind us here. She's kind of in charge of him, and you might notice him in different spots around town. So Paxton is to raise, he's supposed to raise awareness about health issues, um, safety, and definitely immunizations. He's placed around town at the rec center, the courthouse, public health, and the Children's Developmental Center. And just keep your eye out for him. He'll have different outfits on um, presenting different health issues. So right now he's dressed up for flu season. He's a construction worker saying, caution, flu season's coming. So come on down to public health um, anytime or call us. There's always a nurse available to answer your questions um, or to speak with. So um, again, our number is 682-7275. So we'll hope to see you this flu season. Hello and welcome again to another edition of Inside Gillette College on County Connection. I'm Brendan Diamond and I'm here today with Lauren Tompkins, the coordinator of what, what is your title again, Lauren? I'm the coordinator of academic support centers at Gillette College. So that basically means I'm in charge of all the tutoring that happens, math and science and writing. Awesome. Fun stuff. Well, we're going to talk with Lauren in a little bit about what she's doing with some amazing outreach with Westwood High School. But first, we have some news. Excitingly, the Gillette College cross country teams, both men's and women's, are kicking some butt. The men are currently ranked number three in the nation and the women are ranked seventh. So we've got a big track meet coming up in October on the 29th at 10 o'clock a.m. at Camplex Park. That's gonna be the Region 9 NJCAA Championship. So come on out and support the Pronghorns. We also have some movie nights coming up. We have The Secret Life of Pets on October 7th at 8 p.m. and Saturday the 8th at 3 p.m. We have Bad Moms on the 21st at 8 and the 22nd at 3. We also have some exciting hands-on pottery classes happening on October 11th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. That'll be in the Gillette, uh, Gillette College main building. We have some live music from the Icarus account at Presentation Hall on Wednesday the 12th at 8 p.m. And of course, we've got our women's basketball team versus Shadron State. That'll be at the Campbell County High School South Campus uh, on 1028 at 5.30 p.m. We look forward to seeing you all out at all of these events and having some fun with Gillette College. Now we'd like to take a few minutes to talk a little bit about what's going on with our outreach to Westwood High School. So to join us, we have Lauren Tompkins. Lauren, thanks for being here today. Absolutely. All right. So. First of all, let's talk a little bit about what's going on at Westwood. How, what, how did this come about, or how did you get involved with teaching over there? Sure. Well, as most of you probably know, Westwood High School is an alternative high school that is sort of located on Gillette College campus, so super close, just across the bridge from the main building. And what I teach is a, call, well, it's called Gateway to Success, and it's a class for Westwood students who are in their junior or senior year and want to get college credit, so they usually take my class which tells them all about how to be successful in college and then they take another college class of their choice. That sounds excellent. So what has been the response so far from your students? I think they really enjoy it. There's a lot of freedom that they get to enjoy at college that they mm -hmm. don't necessarily have in high school. They have to take a certain number of classes and a certain number of subjects and they really enjoy taking classes that they can see applying to their future career and, and they enjoy that 
I think learning that college is a real opportunity and a real thing for them. Now they can get college credit for these courses too, right? It's not yeah. just a, a high school course. Yeah, no, it is full credit for them through the college and most of the classes they take transfer to another school. So if they wanted to go to University of Wyoming later on or they could just get their associate's degree and it's totally paid for through um, the Bochies grant. So. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, so what is it like teaching one of these classes? Like walk, walk us through a, a typical class for, for yourself. Oh gosh, I, I really enjoy it. And it's, a, it's always a, a fun group of kids and we learn a lot together about the differences between high school and college and all the responsibilities that they have in college that they didn't have in high school. And a big part of the transition for them and one of the fun parts that I get to see is seeing them grow into all the new responsibilities that they have. It sounds fantastic. It sounds like it's really rewarding. It is, and I hope it's rewarding for them. It's definitely rewarding for me. Well, that's great. Now, if you have questions about this or any other program that we have going on at Gillette College, you can always give us a call. Our number is 307-686-0254. That's 307-686-0254. You can also find us online at www.gillettecollege.org. That's www.gillettecollege.org. That's going to do it for this episode of Inside Gillette College on County Connection. We will see you next time, and go Pronghorns! Welcome back to County Connection. Today we're going to have Jamie from the Camplex, and we're going to start with talking about the uh, upcoming gallery coming in October, which we have Judge Doug Dumbrell, who's I always on. He's a judge now? He's been the judge. No. For a very long time. I guess I knew him as an attorney. I didn't realize oh, that he yeah. was a judge now. That's pretty yep. cool. Yeah, so Doug approached me a couple of years ago. Um, he brought in some sketches that he had, um, and it was really intriguing to me, not only because I thought the work was neat, but also sort of the story behind the work. Yeah. So what he does is he has, you know, one of those traditional desktop calendars, and he flips it over, or flips the month prior over, I think, mm -hmm. and he sketches, and it's primarily blue, red, and black ink and they're like like really intricate like mm -hmm. really detailed really intricate and so for an entire month he doodles sketches on this this piece and then he's done with it and he moves on to the next one so yeah. he brought several of those to show me and I thought it was really interesting and like I said I thought the backstory was really yeah. neat and so it's, it just kind of goes to show you that people from all walks of life can be really artistic and, and like to express themselves in different ways and so um, so yeah so he's gonna have a show up and it's gonna be October 20th through the 18th um, he's having an artist reception on October 22nd from the from 5 to 7 p.m. That's not tied to a, a show in the theater like we usually have. That one's kind of a standalone thing. Okay. But artist receptions are always free and open to the public. So come out, talk to Doug, hear his interesting story, um, have a little bite to eat, and, and look at some really interesting artwork that's on the t October 22nd from 5 to 7 p.m. And let's move on through the rest of the month here. On, four, on October 14th, we have Alpin Hong. Yes, but before that, we have something on the 5th, which oh, right, is not sorry. on the calendar. So that's what's tricky about that. It is. Um, so we had a show add-on um, coming through tour called Momix Opus Cactus. And Momix is a, a modern dance company, but it's a modern dance company that's super accessible to people. It's it's something, like, people think of modern dance and they're like, I don't get it, I don't know, there's no storyline to it. It's not mm -hmm. like a ballet that has a storyline. But this is a company that really takes some interesting concepts and makes it really intriguing, visually stunning work. So mm -hmm. this show, Opus Cactus, is about the American Southwest. So it's about the desert, it's about the, the plants that grow there, it's about the animal life, and the, the work that they do is just highly theatrical. So the lighting is gonna be really cool, the imagery that they create with their bodies is really interesting, and their costume is very cool. So even if you're not a fan of dance, think of this more as sort of like a spectacle show. Like it's just really neat. And if you go on our website or our Facebook page or theirs, Momix is the company, look at their video. Like it's okay. really intriguing. Um, and it's hard to describe without seeing it because it's such a visual medium. So check it out. Um, it'll be a really interesting show. It's definitely a family friendly uh, show to come to. And that's going to be on October 5th at 7 p.m. And if you have any dancers out there, we've, we've definitely let the studios know, but they're also doing a master class for dance students earlier in that day, which is a super great opportunity for kids to get to learn from professional dancers yeah. on tour. Um, I know when I was growing up, that was one of my favorite things with dance, was getting to have just like that outside perspective and, 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 and learn new techniques and things from, from the professionals. And then on October 14th, we have Alvin Hong returning to Gillette. 
Um, he will be here, this will be his fifth visit, and he's come and done a variety of different kinds of concerts, worked with different groups in our community, been out in our schools. We've really grown to know and love Alpin. We've watched him start out as a, a very young touring artist and get married and have kids and really kind of mature and grow into his yeah. own. And this show is really a little lot different than what he's done here before, and it's really special because Alpin teamed up with a theater company to create a one-man show, the story of his life. And so it's called Alpen Hong Chasing Chopin because the music of Chopin has really been something that has been part of his life from starting to play piano until current day. Like okay. the music of Chopin has always really spoken to him and has been part of a lot of different parts of his life. And so he'll be playing some Chopin music throughout, but he'll also be telling us a story. There's a multimedia um, element to it with some um, some photos of him growing up and his family, and, and he has a really interesting backstory. And those of you who have seen Alpin perform before, you know he's a great storyteller. He's funny. He makes you laugh so much. But I think this is one of those shows that's going to make you laugh and it's going to make you cry, and you're going to get to hear great music. And, and it's Alpin, so you know. We love Alvin. He's such a dream to work with. He's such an amazing uh, performer. If you have seen him, come see this show because it's something different. If you haven't seen him, you've been missing out. You need to come see him. He is technically a brilliant uh, piano player. He was trained at Juilliard. He's he's amazing and the nicest guy you'll meet. And he'll come out after the show and he'll talk to everybody until the last person's out the door. <laughs> For real. Very nice. So come see that on October 14th. And again, that'll be a very family friendly show as well. Um, you know, little kids, it might not be as interesting for them, little, little ones, because they'll be talking more, but, you know, definitely older elementary students and junior high and high school kids, especially if there's any music students out there, it's going to be a great show. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Something different. Something different, yeah. So we've got some good events for you in October. We've got a whole lot more later in the year, and never too early to start thinking about planning for Christmas. We've got a really fun show, Dr. Kaboom in the theater, Science of Santa for Christmas time, so get your tickets early for that one. Um, and then also the other one that I would say is, is probably our hottest our hottest ticket so far this season is in November, November 2nd, which is Earth's Dinosaur Zoo, which is... Oh yeah, I already know people are really wanting to An incredibly cool show. We had it here a couple of years ago. It sold out. We told, turned 100 people away at the door. So that one is part of our arts education series. If you have any of those punch cards that your students brought home from school, you can get a free ticket. But you do have to bring that and get a ticket because we can't guarantee you a seat just with that card. Yeah. Um, and it, the show itself, again, it's another one to look up because you can't believe it until you see it, but they're life-size animatronic puppets that are so realistic, it's sort of like Animal Kingdom for dinosaurs, the closest you can sort of get to that sort of an experience of learning about and seeing them be yeah. alive. And you can, even as an adult, you can really forget that they're puppets because they look so cool. So It's like real life Jurassic Park. Yeah. Like this time they don't eat you. Right, they will. I guarantee no one will be eaten on stage. Um, so uh, yeah, so great shows. Check out our Facebook page. Get on our website. Call the box office six eight two eighty eight zero two or come down to Campflex and visit us. And um, if you haven't already picked one up, these are all over town. This is your guide to what's going on this season, and it's a great way to know what's happening. Definitely. All right. Well, thank you very much, Jamie. Thank you.